Prima Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. The Passenger Rail Agency of South Africa has signed a 51 billion rand order for 600 new trains. However, all of these trains will not be delivered at once, which means Prasa's refurbishment program will have to run another 15 years. Irma Fenter visited CTLE, where some of the coaches are being refurbished. Prasa has spent 2.1 billion rand on the refurbishment of 570 coaches since 2010. The 100% black-owned commuter transport and locomotives engineering group will refurbish 100 metro rail coaches for Prasa this financial year at its facility in Nigel. CTLE acquired the union carriage and wagon assets from the Murray and Roberts group in 2013. CTLE operations executive Craig Holden explains the process of refurbishing a metro rail coach. We receive the coach and uh, our quality control people together with the customer do a first of visual inspection of the coach. Uh, to understand what is going to be replaced on the coach based on the condition of it. Um, once we get approval from the customer, we have a signed off scope of work and then we start with a stripping process. The stripping process uh, starts with removing the coach body from the bogies, from the running gear underneath. Uh, at that point in time, uh, we then start removing most of the interior components. We remove the floors, we remove the seats, we remove the wiring. Uh, in the case of these coaches uh, behind me, we are changing out the windows, we replace most of the door mechanisms, um, and then an overhaul structural repair to make sure that everything from a mechanical perspective is sound and to specification. How long does it take? The uh, process takes between 40 and 60 days, depending on the coach and depending on the amount of work that's required. Uh, a number of the components that we overhaul uh, are done internally ourselves. We also send components out to suppliers uh, who have the license to overhaul certain things like traction motors or blower mechanisms, those kind of things. So we have a new coach here. So tell us a little bit what's the big change that you bring into the coach? Okay, so uh, we say new coach is a refurbished one. Um, but yeah, this coach here is uh, 35, 40 years old. Uh, what's new is the wiring is new. The interior panels are new. Uh, as you see, the old wood for mica has been replaced with plastic. The seats are new, the heaters are new, um, the floor is new, windows, door mechanisms, door controllers. So effectively good for another six, seven years anyway. Other news making headlines this week. New AMSA CEO Paul O'Flaherty outlines a production first strategy for the steel group. The right ESCOM price will trigger a 10 billion rand Waterberg coal investment and economist Raymond Parsons says fiscal policies are unlikely to prompt economic growth. Newly appointed ArcelorMittal South Africa CEO Paul O'Flaherty delivered an unambiguous production first message in his inaugural interaction with the investment community, saying his management team was committed to fill the mills, produce to capacity, reduce costs and sell aggressively. We have to fundamentally change the company. We have to produce to capacity, we have to reduce costs, and we have to sell. Simple. Simple business. And if we focus on that, we will change the profitability. A successful bulk sample burn test at Majuba Power Station has opened the way for Waterberg coal to be used at Majuba Power Station in Pumalanga. Our product will in fact is earmarked for the Majuba Power Station in Pumalanga. Hence the need for, in fact, the infrastructure development by Transnet and Associated, which is now in place. But ESCOM's need is, in fact, and I think they've recognised, the future of the Waterberg is indeed supporting the power stations in Mpumalanga. It's a lot easier to transport coal from the Waterberg to Mpumalanga than to shift and build new power stations. The project, whilst we you know, have an, an MOU with ESCOM for 10 million tonnes per annum to start with, the technical thesis which we have now validated shows that, we, in fact, we could double, if not treble, the size of that production. You know, we have currently in excess of a 100 year mine life. Northwest University Business School Professor Raymond Parsons has argued that as South Africa had largely exhausted the use of traditional mechanisms to stimulate the fiscus, government now needed to swing its focus to dealing with the internal structural issues that have so far prevented the country from unlocking its true economic value. Now, it means you're not going to close the gap by opening the textbook on page 101 and say, oh, well, this is what you do. Those orthodox remedies, we've more or less used them all up. We've used fiscal policy to support the economy. That's why we've done reasonably well since 2008. But now we're running out of track. 
the deficit, we're into deficit reduction in the budget. Once again, to pick up the theme of the Minister of Finance, no good hiding behind what's happening in the world economy. We've got to address our labour problems, our energy constraints, a number of, of those issues. Now, all this built up, is built up now, but it was already preceded by recognition that these structural issues were going to catch up with South Africa if we didn't do something about it. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy.